EE have recently been undertaking a massive upgrade of their network to enable ever higher speeds for their customers, including in fact for my university serving site, which can be seen in the lovely sunset here. To help enable their customers to take advantage of such fully featured sites, EE recently released the new 4G Wi-Fi which is category 12 LTE capable therefore theoretically of 600 megabits per second download and 100 megabits per second upload. Although naturally to make this a realistic performance test I use the device in busy urban environment indoors in typical public environments like cafes to review this device. So today I'm going to talk about the capabilities of this 4G Wi-Fi and the results of my tests ultimately, so how well it performed in real life use case scenarios. The 4G Wi-Fi is located here next to my OnePlus 6 smartphone. So you can see it is quite a compact device, albeit a little bit thicker than the phone, but that is to be expected because it houses a substantial battery, which I will talk about in a moment. On the front is a USB-C port, which can be used for charging, as well as actually providing a wired network connection to devices which do not support Wi-Fi. On the top are a number of LEDs, so on the left is a mobile network indicator, then there is the Wi-Fi indicator, and an indicator an LED for SMS messages and then finally the battery indicator and if we turn it to the top there is then a power button and finally on the left side is a USB-A port. The USB-A port is located underneath this protective flap and can be used to charge other devices off the 4G Wi-Fi which is very nice indeed. The battery inside the 4G Wi-Fi has a whopping typical capacity of 4.4 amp hours or 16.28 watt hours, which is absolutely massive. And the battery itself is quite big as well in order to have such an amp hour. But it is successful in powering the device for quite a long period of time. In fact, in intensive use with numerous devices connected, each pushing and pulling large amounts of data, the battery life on the 4G Wi-Fi was about four to five hours. In a much lighter workload with the Wi-Fi in my backpack traveling around London, just occasionally using it here and there when stopped off in places, it lasted all day with about 50% battery left. And in fact, even lasted the next day of just relatively light use here and there. So the battery life is very good, which is of course critical for a device that's intended for portable use as this 4G Wi-Fi is. But what about the internet performance of this new EE 4G Wi-Fi? As we heard earlier, this is category 12 capable on the mobile network side, which means 600 megabits per second download and 100 megabits per second upload. But I didn't speak about the Wi-Fi side, which is of course very important because that is what your devices will be connecting to this 4G Wi-Fi with. So it supports 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but individually, both have 2x2 MIMO support, which means that on a 40 MHz carrier, 2.4 GHz with the N standard, the maximum physical rate is 300 megabits per second. Meanwhile, on 5 GHz, it supports AC and 80 MHz channels, which led to a reported link rate of 866 megabits per second. So they are very much as expected. And in fact, actually, the 4G Wi-Fi lets you customize a lot of these options in actually quite a lot of detail in terms of what size channel width and things you want. But of course, if you got to this point in the video, what you'll be wondering is how did it perform in reality? Theoretical speeds on Wi-Fi and 4G are all one thing, but how it actually works can be totally another and is what matters. I tested the 4G Wi-Fi in a number of buildings between about 5 and 6.30 in the afternoon. So pretty much peak time when it comes to network load and also in building. This was designed to replicate a 
more normal use case scenario than say going in the early hours of the morning to get ridiculously high speeds when clearly no one is on the network. So the highest combined upload and download speed I got was 241 megabits per second download and 94 megabits per second upload, which is very, very nice. And in fact, almost all of the tests I did were over 200 megabits per second download and about 40 to 50 megabits per second upload, typically with some others in the 90 megabit per second upload range as well. So this is very good performance from the 4G Wi-Fi, as well as actually EE's network and my local site at the time. So very well done there. The 4G Wi-Fi is also available from an upfront cost on pay as you go of only £89.99, which is very, very cheap and possibly the cheapest way by far for customers to be able to get a device which is capable of 600 megabits per second download and 100 megabits per second upload on 4G. Thanks for watching this video about EE's new high performing 4G Wi-Fi. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and I hope to see you on the next video.